All right, welcome back, guys, to Planet Gen X. We're happy to see you back here with us. How you doing, Brian? You happy to be here today? I'm so happy, man. I uh, know. We're always happy. Happy, happy, happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, we're happy to be here with the uh, Picard, episode six. We're going to do the reaction. We don't do reviews. We do reactions because we can't remember long enough to do reviews. Right. <laughs> Picard, episode six, <laughs> The Bounty. Two separate streams of consciousness with many tangents. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is the. I would think this would be better because yeah, we could go on forever and ever, and and y'all have seen our our old versions and know how how all over the road they can get. So, you know, we can just uh, we we actually took notes this time, y'all. We worked, we worked for a living. Did something we actually did, did a little something, something, man. Can you believe that? Starting yeah, beginning of the episode, we start out with Vatic, man. Upset. Well, actually, even even before that. I wanted to touch on the fact that our predictions were true once again. Which? Which predictions? Well, uh, you had the prediction that uh, uh, pretty soon would be seeing good old Mr. Spiner. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, well, I had seen we had seen him in the trailer. I know a lot of people just thought it was lore. Right. Uh, which and, he is uh, in a way. <laughs> I, I had the prediction that in the next episode or two, we would see Misha. Or Mika. Sorry. Sorry, Mika. Like, she's never going to see this. Mika. The uh, bar's daughter. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. And at first, I was thinking that the girl playing uh, the Forge that we've already been seeing was his daughter. And then when right. we saw the second one, I told my wife, I was like, oh, you know what? I bet that's her, actually. That is obviously his daughter. <laughs> <laughs> totally different. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Now, now, yeah, you're right. Because well, we knew that the episode was running out, and uh, they had to get more people in there. We also had Troy in there finally this season. We've seen her before, but this is her first thing, first time on this season. So, well, uh, uh, and also, I think we even saw her on a hollow screen in this season, right? I can't remember. I want to say. Oh we no, did, no, we saw her in a I flashback. Can't... Yes, we flashback. saw her in that flashback hollow screen. That's right, because she okay. came on with the baby. And yeah. uh, told Will to get his ass home. Right, yeah. He said, get on home! But yeah, yes. uh, I mean, there's one prediction that I think we could have made that I, I, I did, didn't uh, come to, and that was sooner or later we would see the bounty. Yeah. Because, you know, mutiny, wordplay, on the blah, bounty, blah. Yeah. yeah. Which is funny because we actually see the HMS bounty in this as well. Right. Getting ahead of myself, though. So, like I said, we start out with Vatic on the bridge of her ship, and she is not very happy. No, indeed. Now, listen, would you be that one guy who pipes up after she just told anybody not to say anything other than I found Picard? And then that one guy just fucking pipes up? Uh, well, I mean, I don't know. I, I have sometimes been that guy at work. I don't <laughs> know if you, you were working with me when I started some static at, uh, that best Stavia Hills company we worked at. Oh yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, definitely wouldn't be the second guy to do it though. <laughs> yeah. Um, she's Not like her response. Yeah. She's like, you know, you, you feel like she's probably going to kill the next person that speaks up and here's this guy. He's like. Well, you know, let me give my Only three nations till Federation Day. <laughs> oh, no, man, this guy. I'm like, this guy is just dead. He's going to be dead. And I thought, well, maybe he's going to. Nope, never mind. He didn't make it because you right. almost think she, he's going to get a pass. But then I guess that other guy is just reading her mind or whatever. I don't even know what the, how these other guys relate to her. They're speaking some kind of insect language, it sounds like. Um, but I'm pretty know. sure it was just a look. Yeah, it probably was, because she was kind of facing him, wasn't she? With her back to that yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah. Being all snotty and shit. But so, basically, she, uh, they, I mean, she's chasing beacons. You see, we see her come up on one of the Titans' beacons. and um, Well, we see three Federation ships come up to it first, right? Yeah, they're and all chasing they, beacons. they do a, a shot of the strike. Yeah, coming out. Coming up. Coming out of, like, it, like it's cloaked, but it ain't cloaked. It's what it, right. it kind of gives you that feeling. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like we didn't want to put the money into decloaking this thing. <laughs> how much does Amanda Plummer look like her dad? I was just thinking that when she was doing that kind of like little monologue and stuff. A lot in that scene. Yeah, I was like, whoa! Especially maybe I guess just she's uh, since she's getting older, 
maybe it's really starting to show too but i was like wow she really is looking like her dad there yeah. christopher Plummer. for those that don't know that's one of those things see now now i'm doing what i was just talking about no i don't need i we're recording many videos today and i'm i'm actually referencing a video from something else because <laughs> you know we were talking about how the young don't know from things just because you know they weren't around um right. So yeah, they probably don't know that Amanda Plummer is Christopher Plummer's daughter. They probably don't even know who the hell Christopher Plummer is. I was going to say. Yeah, so there it is. Uh, we'll keep it Star Trek and say you would have seen him if you want to go watch Star Trek: The Undiscovered Country. You can see him in that as one of the main Klingons. I, I forget the Klingon name he plays. It's General um, uh, mm. Chan Trent. No, I'm thinking. <laughs> I was just thinking of the Blue Gown Enterprise. Um, <laughs> Oh man, I had. Uh, oh, it doesn't matter. You'll you'll see it, it. Fairly important general. Yeah, if you go and look, is uh, General Chang. That's who it is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. Uh. And then yeah, before the the scene ends, she vows to find anyone that is connected to Picard in any way. She's going to find somebody because she's going to find him. family lovers any, it. any connection any connection you know the guy that made him the drink at the bar 20 years ago right guy in somebody else who knows what um and then we end up we see uh bev and uh picard together Picard, yeah, yeah. she tells uh she tells him that uh, jack has that eremitic syndrome right same thing that picard had um, which we don't even know really what it does, but what I took away from it, because Beverly said, was that it just it's like uh, you, you have an overclocked brain, like an overclocked yeah. CPU. And it just burns out. Yeah, I guess so. So uh, Now, the interesting thing, I think they took, you know, so um, he was having those weird hallucinations and all good things. That's when they first find out about it. That's when you hear about it. And uh, it makes you wonder because of the stuff that Jack's seeing. It's not just to me. It's not just hallucinations. It's like almost uh, your 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 brain is so wired up that you, you have a you now you have a connection to the universe that anybody could have if they could reach that level uh, that frequency mm -hmm. with their brain. And maybe because in sleep we you know we're able to our brain's able to do more uh, and without us actually doing anything, maybe that's why in his dreams it really manifests more than any other time up until recently. But I mean, it's obviously giving him some kind of clairvoyance, uh, some kind of born Jason Bourne shit, you know, something. Um, I mean, like the scenes that he sees are scenes that happen, right? But yeah, except he's not acting on them. Right. Yeah. Like he didn't go and kill the whole bridge crew. Right. So it's not like every one of them is, it's not just a set in stone thing, but Huh. You know, I, I don't know. It's almost, I, I don't know. It's, it, I have no idea where they're going with this. I don't either. And I, I also wonder if there's, if like maybe the syndrome doesn't explain everything that's, that's going on in those, right? That's what I was just about to say. Maybe I, I feel like it's almost a letdown. Um, right. But yeah, he inherited that from Picard. Um, and so he ends up, Picard goes and finds Jack in the bar and they just go kind of, it's really kind of, I don't know, it's a pointless little scene there. Just Jack talking about how he knows he has that. Uh, I don't know. It was boring. It was a family bonding moment. It was pretty boring. Yeah, it was, it was almost unnecessary. Uh, so then, and a lot of this, this, they're just going back and forth because we end up, they end up dropping uh, Worf, Raffi, and, and um, Riker, Riker off at Daystrom Station because they all figure out, well, we got to go to Daystrom because that's where this weapon came from. We got to figure it out. So they end up Well, dropping. first off, Riker's a little upset by Worf, right? How do he's you like, this isn't, he's, this isn't the Worf I know and love, right? Well, yeah, I was going to say that um, this way, we have a couple, this, first of all, this episode is just littered with great one-liners, and um, it's a fanboy's wet dream for sure. With all the ships we'll see later, um, but uh, let's see what did he say? Oh shit! First of all, I know one thing. We heard the original series. Uh, transporter sound in that scene when when we they did. when they beam over when Worf and Raffi beam over and I really loved that uh, I also loved the 
the fact that, um, you know, it's something you really don't see a lot of it. I think they did it in one or two of the movies where, like, somebody says something under their breath, like, as the transporter engages. Yeah. It's, uh, and it's, you know, apparently it's been like 11 years since, uh, since Worf's seen Card. Right. Um, and, and Worf used to be, Worf took over as captain of the Enterprise F after, after Jean Luc left. Mm -hmm. Um, there's some weird dynamic between Seven and Raffi, but see, I didn't even know that they were broke up. We find out that later yeah. as a wharf, but uh, yeah, I didn't even know that. I, and if they said it in one of the previous episodes, I have no idea. Um, but yeah, who knew? Who knew they were separated? Then we, uh, yeah, we find the, Riker's kind of surprised that that old wharf is just uh, uh, pacifist now, and. Right. Um, of course, I'm getting ahead of myself because that's that he does that right before they get here. But anyway, so they end up uh, they go to a briefing and they they figure out that they need to go to Daystrom. I I, I skipped that part and uh, figure out that they need to find the real weapon. And then you know Picard uses the word burgle. That's so funny. I did, but yeah. I also thought that that Riker's line about excellent use of the word burgle, Admiral. I was like, that was kind of cheesy. Yeah, I but agree. I, but I what's was... funny is that I love to use the word burgle like that. If I can wedge it in like that, I will too. And I loved that Riker acknowledged that, but at the same time, it sounded so kiss ass, and I, I don't know. It was just it was cringe worthy. So um, is it a, is it a mouthfeel for you to use the word burgle? No, no, it's not that. I just like if I could use it in a sentence at any time, legitimately, I would. Lo I love to. I like the word burgle. It's just an interesting word. You don't hear okay. it often. I was you burgled don't. yesterday. You know, somebody would say I was robbed or something. Somebody broke in, but nobody says burgled. I've been robbed, man. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, uh, excellent use of the word burgle, Captain or Admiral. He said, um, Admiral. Yeah. Yeah, and then they. You know, so anyway, we go back to. Uh, to the uh, the transporter, and, and that's when we see Worf talking. <laughs> Worf talking about going into battle with lovers. He starts on his little spiel about, you know, I have gone into battle. You know, I've gone into battle with lovers before. I'm not doing a very good Worf nowadays. Well, I mean, uh, he's not doing a very good Worf yet. Now, well, I, I say he's not, but you know, his voice is definitely different than it used to be. You think I hadn't really noticed much difference, really? Ash. Uh but he but it's it's also you gotta remember he's being more passive, so uh yeah. he might you know, he's not trying to be as intense and lower his voice because his natural voice isn't as low as wars. It's an right. affect a little bit. So he, yeah. you know, it could be a little bit that he forgot and he's just not being quite as aggressive as he normally is. But um yeah, he talk <laughs> uh and then he tells uh Riker, this is funny. I there's a lot of great one liners, but he's like, you know, Riker talks about how, you know, he's going to what kick ass and stuff like that. And Worf tells mm -hmm. him, I prefer pacifism to actual combat. And uh, yeah. Riker's like, oh, we're all going to die. Well, that was what I was saying was the great shot. We, yeah. we get the transporter engaging and like under his breath, he's like, yeah. we're all going to die. I was getting there. You fast forwarded us like way far. To get yeah, to that well, point. I mean, I don't know. I'm literally, Again, I li uh, literally wrote all this scene by scene, so yeah, uh, I may be getting there. You just <laughs> you have to go scene by scene <laughs> in your head. I don't know which which is how you watched it and how you wrote your notes down. I, I, I almost wish we could watched do, it. And anytime I saw something interesting, I paused it and wrote, yeah, wrote it I, I wish, uh, which is the same exact thing I did, but it's almost like there's too much scene by scene. But um, yeah. I uh, forgot the, what the fuck I was going to say. It's the <laughs> second time that's happened today. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, so they're they're heading over to Daystrom. And as they're going through Daystrom, my man, how about seeing Moriarty? Moriarty, that, that was cool. You're like, what the hell is going on here? And I thought that the actor from Moriarty looks really good for his age. I didn't even know he was uh, alive, even. Yeah, uh, I, at first I was like, is that AI? But then I went back and looked, and no, it's, it's him. I yeah, know, it's him. Uh, that is... 
Daniel Davis. Yeah, Daniel Davis. And uh, in the first scene, he looks really good. Now, the subsequent scenes, it's different. Uh, it's not straight on. The lighting's a little right. bit different. And you can see that he, he's in not as as Obviously, he's an older man, but yeah, I just thought at first he looked he looked pretty good, but it it, it played well. And, well, uh, we also had a ton of Easter eggs right before that, man. right? Oh, as they're of crap. going through the station, yeah, and we had that crow too that that's uh, obviously keyed with more. He's a key. He's a clue. As is and for Moriarty. those of you who don't know, uh, you know, I've got to handle Corvus Peta. I got to speak up a little on this. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. There are a lot of people claiming that that's a raven. It's just a really big effing crow. Uh, it's got a little bit of a hook to the beak. It doesn't have the right tail shape. It's there, a crow. Yeah, people, yeah, there are there are difference between ravens and crows, for those of y'all that don't know. I get battled on that all the time, too, bro. <laughs> but um, Well, I just saw so many people saying, like, raven, there was a raven. Look at the raven. I'm yeah. like, it's not a raven. No, it was a crow. Crow! But, uh... uh well, we had the Teleron generator, right? Well, okay, so I didn't see I didn't see that specifically, but I saw uh, Genesis two, which I thought yeah, was hilarious. That. You know, because uh, they, they probably shouldn't have rebuilt it, but you know, nobody can stop. It's just like it's just, it's a commentary on just you know build it anyway, you know, um, yeah. and they did. Yeah, so Genesis they, device. Yeah, they had a new Genesis device. Um, they had Kirk's corpse. Yeah, remains there, which I thought was pretty neat because we find out that there is other remains there later. We'll get to that. Right. Um, let's see. Uh, oh man, the attack triple, the attack triple, the attack everybody, triple. Everybody keyed on the triple, right? But yeah. obviously, this is not your usual furry ball of the tribble it's a little modified yeah a little genetically modified tribble which uh don't they still have the anti-genetic stuff in this maybe that maybe they're more tolerant nowadays probably are uh, well i mean so there were a couple of other easter eggs i didn't notice right off the bat one of them which would not be something that allowed by starfleet was uh, a borg vendent Verniculum, ver, ver, something like that. Uh, yeah, the verniculum. It's uh, it's that little I didn't recognize triangle what that was thing. When I first saw it, but yeah. yeah, it's at the heart of the ship, and it's responsible for like communications yeah. and all this other stuff. Yeah, it's pretty much the yeah the heart of the ship. I don't know I'm if you would call it a computer, sure but that Starfleet would be like that's a big no no. <laughs> well, I didn't even see that. I don't know that that uh, I saw any mention of it. I didn't. I don't think my guy I watched mentioned it because I, I like to go back and see if anybody's. I don't know where some people get some of this stuff from. How the hell they figure out? Because I froze on some of this stuff, I couldn't see uh, yeah. very well. Well, I didn't. I didn't get anything uh, in, until my second watching. Yeah, I was just like, I, I kind of keyed off on the Genesis device. That's probably I all. Like, I that caught. looks familiar. I didn't see the triple. I'd walked out of the room for a second, so I didn't even see that at all. That was like and a face hugger from Alien to me. That was, right, that was yeah. crazy. <laughs> Um, you know, but the Klingons, it's funny because it's a running gag with Worf back to the old Deep Space Nine episode where they go back to the trouble with Tribbles, um, you know, uh, about the Klingons having the big wars with the Tribbles and stuff. And, well, you can imagine how vicious a bunch of Tribbles like that would be to some right. Klingons. And they had like three or four mouths. That was crazy. It was pretty cool looking. Kind but, of funny uh, you bring what was up it? Deep what Space a- Nine. Yeah. <laughs> what other... Uh, yeah, because we have we have a little teaser that we, or a little something that goes with that too, right? Uh, um, I think that was it. There was yeah, the uh, Theron generator from Nemesis, yeah. the Genesis device from Two, uh, the Kirk, Kirk, the corpse of Kirk. Yeah, um, which apparently I didn't know this. Uh, you know, I thought it was just lost in the time stream or. Uh, you know, buried by Picard. He did bury uh, him, but apparently somebody went back and grabbed his body. It was buried. Well, apparently, they came back to to ask him about it, and he told them, and they picked it up, and supposedly did like another burial that was like a, a shadow, like a, a secret, you know, mm-hmm. way to get the corpse. Basically. Okay. Well, interesting. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you brought it up because he he did bury him in Genesis. I mean, generations. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we so we got to see a lot of great little Easter eggs there. So this fanboy's wet dream this episode. It really has some great stuff. 
Yeah. Uh, where are we at here? Um, uh, so yeah, we were talking about Moriarty before. Yeah, that. Moriarty uh, and, the, right and after the crow, that. and then they they walk in and they well they uh, well, they the hear crow, this they hear these these tones and Riker's like oh that's C sharp that's A flat blah 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 and they realize that it's uh, Pop goes the weasel because it's what the well, first thing that anytime when Riker first met Data back in the day, uh, Data was trying to sing Pop goes the weasel. He was a terrible whistler, and uh, Riker finished it off so. Data was trying to communicate with them in a way because they thought that they that he was trying to kind of keep them out because uh, Mor- Moriarty shoots at him and stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, and then once Riker figures it out, he whistles the tune and lets them evolve, and they see yeah what they and I, I figured that out like right right before uh, they cut to the old footage yeah I think I, I was like literally seconds that, before too yeah I was like he's gonna he's gonna be Doing Pop Goes the Weasel for Data because those two notes are pretty identifiable. Yeah. Uh, but the crow from before was actually when uh, Data started dreaming. Right. As well. That was kind of a big thing. Uh, he encountered it a lot um, when talking to Noonan yep. for the first time in dreams. Yeah, that was, uh, was a good episode. So, um, so they get past once it once Riker uh, whistles the tune that lets them in the vault and they see what they what looks like data and, and uh, they see B four <laughs> they see yeah. B four there as well who let's okay so we know he's he came before data but data was fully functional obviously B four was not I kept waiting right. to see if they would show that cod piece and uh, <laughs> they finally it, it finally did creep into the camera shot there and he was as smooth as a Ken doll yep. So I guess I guess B four was a little had a little penis envy from old data there because he's supposed to be fully functional according, according to uh, Tasha Yar, right? Well, according to himself, actually, I am. Yeah, I was going to say he brought it up once too. Yeah, well, he he told her he was fully functional. He he had that special moment with her. Yeah. Um, and then they well they and then they come across that that uh, thing with Soong. And I think that that was cool because it kicks off that little montage where we're going between um, the other crew, and so we start seeing the ships because um, right. while that while they're at Daystrom, they have to uh, Picard and them they have to leave them there, so they end up going to see Geordi at the uh, ship museum, the fleet museum. That uh, Geordi's a commodore who I didn't even know they had commodores anymore. I thought they went got rid of those with the original series. Right. But um, yeah, Jordy's Commodore. He's taking care of the Fleet Museum, and boy, what a fanboys! I'll say it for a third time: wet dream. This was fun, fun, fun for me. I was right up to the screen trying to see which you know what I could see, uh, which ships I could identify. Mm-hmm. Um, we have the 1701A Constitution class, Kirk's ship. Right. Literally, Kirk's ship. Nobody else had this ship. No one. So uh, that was cool to see. We, you said, uh, funny you should mention Deep Space Nine. We see the Defiant down there, and that's right. so. That brings us to where they're they're sitting there talking about it, um, Jack and and Seven, and they're having a little reminiscent moment, which, which I thought was cool. So she's kind of like going through and looking at the different ships that are there, and he talks about well, Defiant. When they bring up the Defiant, everybody, all the fanboys know what's going to happen, right? What's that? Well, well, we'll get to it, but you know. Well, no, I don't consider it with that part of it. Maybe he, I didn't even think of maybe he thought of it right then because. Uh, it's the Defiant, and the thing yeah. I always remembered about the Defiant, that was, that was one of the, the ships that could cloak. Yeah, it, it did. It could cloak. And, uh, and may, yeah, I don't think about that. Maybe that kicked the seat off in his mind before he got to the, um, the Bird of Prey. But she shows off Voyager. And uh, she gets really sentimental. She's fascinated by it, right? Yeah, I thought it was really great because I thought, man, how cool would it be for her? To, like, that was her home for yeah. like a long time. And there it is right there. She's been away forever. And you could, like, go on there and actually see where you've been. I, I would find that very cool. Um, okay. So, other ones, she showed <laughs> the New Jersey, which was a Constitution class that looked just like the uh, original Enterprise. Mm-hmm. But that was the New Jersey. Um the Titan was in one of those rings, you know, they parked in one of those rings. Right. So one of those ships you see is the Titan. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a 
Romulan a Katinga. I'm sorry, a uh, there's Romulan Warbird. I saw that myself. Right. Um, there is a Katinga class Klingon vessel and a bird of prey, and that's where Jack. We know Jack gets the idea for the cloak from that for sure. Right. So yeah, the maybe, bird of prey is obviously the bounty which went down in San Francisco yeah, Bay. That was great. I mean, they they couldn't give us any more just like fan fan service. Yes. Fan service on a platter, man. It was awesome. Yeah, that's the HMS Bounty, and they had a whole thing about how it was cloaked itself under the ocean, and uh, they had a hard time finding it, but, you know, Bones had re- renamed it. McCoy had mm-hmm. renamed it the HMS Bounty. So, yeah. you know, the name of the episode's The Bounty. That's pretty good. Um, there is, this is great. This is one that I saw, and I said, when I first wrote it down, I said, it's an NX-class ship, but... It, the hull, I could tell from far away that the uh, secondary hull was not the NX-01. I was, in fact, wrong. It is the NX-01. The NX-01, had it gone to a fifth season, which they did draw out the ship, uh, mm-hmm. had a refit. And they did draw it out, and that's what you see there is the refit NX-01 Enterprise. And I love that. I think that's so cool. Because I said, it has to be there. It just has yeah. to be. And, right. I, and I'm so glad it was, come to find out. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's uh, that's pretty much it that we could identify. There might be one yeah, around the I other call. side uh, that, that just didn't make it to the screen if they even put anything there, you know, mm-hmm. um, knowing it wasn't going to be on the camera view. But, I kind of uh, have a feeling that uh, the the fact that they showed the bounty and they took the cloaking shield off of the bounty, uh, you know, it's an old movie. Uh Mutiny on the Bounty, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's making me wonder if we're going to have like more uh, changings on uh, the Enterprise or the Titan, and uh, there's going to be like a mutiny. It, it felt like it, it could be that kind of narrative, which I don't like the idea of. Yeah, I don't know if I care for that. I guess we'll we'll find out. Maybe it's a mutiny on another ship. Not Maybe necessarily the good guys, right? Um, but yeah, that that pretty much kicks off the uh, everything we know about the ships. The uh, that that was just great. And then they, of course, they meet Jordy up, and he's he just doesn't look happy at all. And he kind of seems like he's he's glad to see people, but he's just you can tell he's not happy. And um, I thought he was being kind of a dickhead. Um, you know, that's one thing I never noticed about Lavar, but was shown to be in this episode. I never noticed. Um, he did so much with the old role of Jordy in TNG, right? With the yeah. banana clip covering his face, but he's got very large, expressive eyes. Oh yeah, man! And uh, boy, there, I could and and he gets really angry later on with Picard. And I kept thinking, man, I can only think of one other time that I've seen him angry in uh, the classic series uh, mm-hmm. that I know of, and. He didn't even touch the anger level that he had on this with Picard, and I thought that was awesome because you never see Jordy like that. Um, plus, also he was just like, you know, you're coming to talk with me, and he was just very forceful. It's not like he was gonna, you know, be the subservient old, uh, you know, uh, um, lieutenant commander. Lieutenant, or, you know, yeah. Yeah, he was letting him know real quick. You got my daughters involved in some shit, bro. Giving him the business. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you can't be doing this. I mean, like he was, he was harsh with Picard. I thought, um, I thought it was pretty interesting. But like, yeah, like you said, he had a real good, real, real good moment there. Yeah, and we actually see uh, Mika for the first time. Uh, it was it was good for me to see her on there. I, I know um, she's done a lot of stuff on like Geek and Sundry and whatnot. Um, she did seem a little nervous to me, yeah. maybe. Yeah, a, a little, little bit, bit stiff. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's just kind of one of those things that time time is the only thing that can solve that. So yeah, and I knew right, pass. Yeah, I knew right off the bat too that she was the the uh, father's daughter, and that the other girl was the was the disappointment. Right. To him, you know, because yeah. she didn't follow in his footsteps. But then, you know, we come to find out that she actually knows quite a lot about engineering. She liked, you know, building speeders, wrecking them all the time and building them, rebuilding them with him. To but, spend time with her father. But yeah, she's not, she's not the same as her sister, who, who's a straight up engineer. 
just like her dad, just like her old man. And that was cool to see. I like seeing him get a chance to work with his daughter on a Star Trek show like that. Um, definitely cool. I thought the one scene that they talked about that was a little weird because she was in the room for that. You know, he had that conversation with Sydney about how she wrecked speeders and everything. Mm -hmm. She was in the background of that shot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and he had that great line Jordy did because they, uh, you know, Jack, we, we told you steals that damn uh, uh, cloaking device. And mm -hmm. Jordy has that great line. You stole the goddamn cloaking device from <laughs> my bird of prey. <laughs> right. That's the anger I'm talking about that I've ever seen. And that was just great. Uh, and then uh, war, uh, then we see that line from uh, Riker, and uh, he's like, cloak? Cloak with what? And War's like, I guess superior Klingon technology. Right, yeah. Fucking great, man. There was some really great one-liners in this. Yeah. Um, yeah, I already, talked about, <laughs> I already talked about B4 and his fully functioning... <laughs> non fully functioning pecker. Uh then Riker man gets captured. Oh god, yeah. And the reason I bring that up is just to say that we finally see Troy make her first appearance in the whole season because Baddock did find somebody like we said at the beginning to hold up and it wasn't just for Picard. Yep. She's now got he cuz he's like I ain't giving up shit to you. Well, I guess She's you might like, be. Well, not for me, <laughs> but for Troy. And uh, that's pretty much it, man. I mean, that's 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 the end of the episode. Well, not really the end of the episode. They do go through Data. Um, they find out that Data is, is an amalgam. Well, there was that scene of them actually doing the uh, uh, the transfer. Yeah, they transfer the before. Device device from, oh, from, from the Bird of Prey into the Titan. And yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They, like, overloaded, and that, that's where they got to. But, yeah, after all that... Um, yeah, they're in the vault with B four and well, they they skull. They had they had uh, they've got data back on the ship by now, and they've you know he's got the information that if y'all remember Nemesis B, Data's memory was downloaded to B four, but they could not get it uh, for whatever reason. It was just really a plot device to not get it. Now they're letting it was it an be accord gone. of some sort. <laughs> well, yeah, you had the old Android thing uh, where yeah. the Android things were banned, and that's been lifted. So now more people have done. You know, Alton soon got to do some work, and he basically. Uh, made it where he has lore, lull, uh, uh, data's before in there, and before, and Alton are all inside there. Um, so now it's not just Actually, data. I think it was just a recording of him. I think it, it actually said Noonan, didn't it? I'll have to go back and look. I don't, was it? I don't know. I thought it was Alton. He may have said Noonan. I we'll think he see. said Noonan, but they had a recording of Alton. So. Yeah, well, we'll see. Um, because I know they could get his... I don't know if Noonan had any of his stuff in any of their chips at any time. Uh, we know that Alton could, because Noonan might not have been around to do brain transfer. You see what I mean? So that was something Alton yeah. discovered, being able to transfer like that. Right. So I don't know if we ever had anagrams from Noonan. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. see. I, now you may we'll go back and look. look and see. Uh, <laughs> Y'all go look. I just and see. swear I remember hearing Noonan in there. For yeah. Some well, please um, make a comment if if uh, save us trouble going back and look. I've already watched it <laughs> twice now. Not to say I won't watch right. it again, but I don't have to go watch it this week. Um. Oh, and then so it, a little nugget. You know, a, a data says that in this Android M five ten frame. I right. am, you know, all those people or whatever. Yeah. And now M510 has a meaning. That's that's the, uh, in the original series, there's, day, day, you see an episode where Daystrom, I forget the name of the episode, where Daystrom is on the Enterprise. And the computer that Daystrom uses is the M510. So that's just a little Easter egg there. The yeah, name. I can't remember the name of the episode either. Uh, yeah. Um, but anyway, so... So Jordy's working on him, trying to get him back up, and they uh, they have a chat, and they ask, you know, basically go through the process of Who's asking the what weapon? was taken. Yeah, yeah. What, what was taken, and immediately, I knew as soon as he said Jean-Luc Picard, I knew that the body, because they that was the Kirk was foreshadowing. Right. Yeah. That was the foreshadowing for us to know that Picard's body is there, too. It got stolen. He said, Jean-Luc Picard, Jean-Luc Picard, some weird voice, uh, I think it's B4's voice, actually. It is, yeah. B4's yeah. voice. 
And uh, he's like, I'm right here, Data, you know. And yeah. uh, <laughs> I knew I'm like, dude, he's got your body. And then, of course, they, he, he does the little hollow eyes, which we've never seen before. That was kind of, he, he did a little R2-D2 there. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and we see Picard's uh, remains. That's yep. the weapon that was stolen. I don't know if we're still using weapon. What, what, you know, are we weaponizing Picard's remains now? How do we? It's going to be interesting, to say the least, to know where they're going with this. Because right. it obviously has something to do with Jack, perhaps. Uh, that's Well, I mean, they're, they, they took Picard, and they're after Jack, so, yeah. I, it, what, what could possibly, does it have anything to do? Okay, so... One thing I have to ask, wouldn't Picard's time as Lacutus have cured his uremotic syndrome? You would think, right? That, but at the same time, he wouldn't necessarily have been chosen by the Borg in the first place if it wasn't for him being him. Did that episode in All Good Things, did that put the uremotic syndrome in there? I don't know. See that maybe that if it's after if it's after so all good things is the end. So if he caught it then okay I'm fine. But if he had it supposedly before he was the cutest, you would think that the the nanites would have just gotten rid of it. Right, but I mean it's it's questionable as to whether or not it's something that a knight could take care of because the Borg, you know, they obviously. Uh, the sick and unhealthy, they would not use, right? They would yeah. maybe take parts off of whatever, but they would not use them as a core unit. Well, yeah, no, they wouldn't take, yeah, they would take parts off already made Borgs, but they definitely wouldn't yeah. take parts from humans or anything like that. I mean, or any species for that matter, uh, sick or, like you say, sick or dying or whatever. It would be useless. Yeah. But uh, I just wondered that. That was a thought I had because I was like, wait a minute now. Why does he have it if he was the cutest? Because. I should have cured anything he had, you know, cancer, whatever. Of course, they probably don't have cancer. Well, I probably- was also thinking about why they had, why Daystrom had Kirk and uh, Picard. And, and to be honest, I would think uh, it has to do with the events of, uh, is that Nemesis? Which one was it where, where they, they had? had? Where they had shins on? No, the, uh, uh, Romulan, the it was the one with, with uh, Malcolm McDowell in it. That was Generations. Generations, yeah. yeah. Where Kirk died, yeah. Yeah, uh, so ob- obviously, yeah, they've gone through, both of them have gone through a bunch of different weird stuff that maybe the remains could be studied of how it physically altered their forms, you know. Yeah, I well, like I said, I can't wait to see where this goes because... Uh, you know, I hope that the link with Jack and, and all this makes sense. I hope Uromotic Syndrome is some way of communicating with the universe in some way. You know, get you to that, you know, like you get that, like you meditate to get that yeah. to that level. Maybe this is a, getting your brain to a level where you can speak to the universe in some way or see, the, you know, uh, like see into the mycelium network or something, you know, I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? But... Anyway, that is the end of the episode, and I gotta say, man, fan service a la Modi. It was so good. Um, and I think we'll see more of it, to be honest. Yeah, I think so they're not too. done. I'm pretty sure there's going to be. I, I can't think of who it would be, but there's going to be be like another big cast member to pull in. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. One final thought I had that I noticed. Uh, Especially maybe just because he pulled his his uh, his little shirt thing down, um, Jonathan Frakes, man, really looking timid in this episode. I thought like timid is hmm. showing his age. And yeah, I well, I mean, I I think I've seen that in in a lot of the episodes, um, and maybe I have too, but maybe I just didn't really occur to me. And like I said, just seeing his chest from the neck, uh, you know, just a little more of his neck to chest. Yeah. I think that I think if he had it normally buttoned up, maybe it wouldn't because I want to call it a turkey neck. It's not that bad, but you know what I mean. Like I mean, <laughs> I know it would cover it's an old man more. neck. Yeah, yeah. So maybe that's just why it showed out to me more. But yeah, I thought, wow, he looks really timid. And I'm not talking about when he was uh, captured and beat up and all that stuff. Right. You know, this was he pretty much was in the whole episode like that. 
um, when they when they got over to Daystrom because it, it's like they were trying to convey that it's like really hot or I don't know. <laughs> you know what else could have happened? It, it it could have been you comparing him to that scene with him and Data. He was a yeah very different actor back then, right? Yeah, well, very very young Data too. I mean, uh, Spiner as well, man. I mean, yeah. both super super young, super thin. Um, those were the good old days. <laughs> we're all a little bit thinner and younger. <laughs> I definitely am, man. I'm working out hard. Yeah, getting the muscles going, losing that weight. Yeah, boy. Anyway, so that was an excellent episode of Picard. Uh, I guess we've got two more episodes Hope to so. go. Yeah, at least. And uh, yeah, probably two. Man, that just seems too quick. Man, I wish they'd do like at least twelve. A lot of places were doing twelve episodes, but now it seems like streaming likes the old eight episodes. Um, I did learn something after watching this. Yeah. Uh, I was looking up uh, facts on LeVar after watching it. Um, uh, well, a couple of things. I, I didn't know Mika has a brother, apparently. Mm. Uh, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. It's not th- that important. It's just, you know, I didn't know. I thought she was an only child. And you know, um, both their names and are, li- are mentioned in All Good Things. Picard brings them up when Jordy comes to see him in All Good Things. He goes, you know, how are... Uh Alyssa, Mika Alondra, and, and Mika. So they've, oh, they've okay. been known since way back when that they that would be their name. So that was cool little connection there. Yeah, I'm actually talking about LeVar. Oh, I know. I was just saying it, it occurred. I yeah. remembered that little Easter egg, so I thought you'd you know, put it in there while we're still on the air. There was... Uh, I did not know he was born in West Germany, apparently. Oh, yeah? I didn't know that yeah. and We I were talking like, about Reading must Rainbow. Have been yeah, Last week. must have been super lonely for him. <laughs> yeah, I imagine so. Uh, but yeah, he started that. We were talking about 1983 last week, and he started re- reading Rainbow that year. So, yeah. Always loved good old LeVar, man. I thought he, he always just seems, you know, sometimes you think you know somebody through the through the TV or whatever, and you come to find out you really didn't want to know him after all. Yeah. But I, I've yeah. always felt like LeVar just was a good soul. A yeah, good, I kind think that- man. I think that's the general consensus, but at the same time, I think it has something to do with, like I said last time you mentioned him, he was everybody's favorite standing father. Yeah, yeah, true. And and that was why seeing him get so angry in this episode really floored me, because that's not a LeVar you see. He's always, mm-hmm. to me, if I ever wanted to be just most, he seems the most even-tempered. Yeah. Very even-tempered. Not good with ladies, but very even-tempered. But anyway, we thank you so much, guys, for sticking around with us for this re not a review, not a recap, review reaction reaction recap. Just a guy, just some Gen X thought about watching Picard. And we'll be back next week with episode number seven. And we're about to go record Mandalorian. What episode are we on? Four of Mandalorian. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. We're about to go the record that team. video. So y'all come check that out when we get it posted. Please give us a subscribe and like. We're still trying to grow much, much, much bigger. Um, So, yeah, do that for us, and uh, we'll be back with more content here in a little bit. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, we'll see you on the flip side.